Hello, my name is Pastor David Kappas, and together we are lounging in a Lutheran library. Welcome to another edition of Lounging in Lutheran Library. Um, today, our theme is building blocks. In the Lutheran tradition, we have a building block called stewardship. Stewardship, the basic idea is that everything we have is a gift from God, belongs to God, and that we are entrusted with its use to do things that would make God happy with all of it. So if you proceed down a line in building blocks that starts with stewardship, then the next building block in there is generosity. Uh, we give of that which we have. Um, the next thing that that builds upon is an attitude of gratitude. Um, it's easier to be generous when you are grateful for what you have. And that is built upon uh, the idea, a building block of abundance. That is, we've been given more than enough for what we need, and that frees us to be generous, to share, and be good stewards of what God has given us. And so we, we tend to talk about that in terms of scarcity versus abundance. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. It is God's desire that we live a life of abundance. And when we have an attitude of gratitude about God's blessings in our lives, we can see all of the things that are available to us to be generous with. So there's a, there's a whole uh, area um, of research and practice called asset thinking and asset planning. And the whole idea behind that, and many congregations are trying to work with this in their own lives, is to, is to use that as a building block for, for moving forward into the future. What do we have? And what can we do with it rather than what do we lack and how can we go get it? So one of the uh, one of the things in my library that is helpful for that is this little yellow book called The Great Permission. And what it's referring to is giving yourself permission to focus on your strengths, to focus on what you have um, in order to do good work in the world rather than to focus on what you lack or what you feel like you need or what your weaknesses are. Focus on your strengths. Focus on what you have. So it's a whole system of thinking and looking at the ways in which um, we are more powerful, we have been more blessed um, than we might imagine. So um, this is a book, again, it's called The Great Permission, an asset-based field guide for congregations. Uh, but there are a lot of things in here that apply for individual life as well. Um, it's available through the ELCA. And actually, there are a lot of copies just laying around here at the church. So if you'd like to take a, a look at this more, let me know and I can get a copy to you. But I wanted to share um, one of the little, it's a, it's a book set up in a lot of like little vignettes. This is a little thing all by itself. Um, and then there's suggestions on, on you know, how to things, case studies on asset planning and everything. And then just background types of things. And I wanted to share one of those with you today. So this is entitled Power and Weakness. Something was wrong with the Apostle Paul's body, and he knew it. Some problems with his eyesight, the lingering effects of all those beatings, some kind of thorn in the flesh, nothing to write home about. But Paul could write to the Christians in Corinth that his physical weakness was some kind of asset for his godly work. God's power was strongest when Paul was weak. I would suggest at this point you might consider reading 2 Corinthians chapter 12, especially verses 8 and following, and read and reflect and pray about that. So, where's the asset in weakness of any kind? First, it strips you of any idea that you're self-made self-sufficient or self-perpetuating. When you understand your weakness, you are relieved of the enormous burden of thinking that you're in charge of everything. When that happens, whether it's to you as a person or to a congregation, you begin again with dependence on God and on God's gracious blessings. The blinders of self-idolatry are gone 
and you get to see what's really true, that you have assets that come from God's abundance. You can be grateful for even the smallest gift from God. Now you are powerful. You may still be weak, of course, but that won't be who you really are when all is said and done. You'll have come to believe that God's power coming through you and you will have acted powerfully as well for the good of others and to God's glory. Power in weakness will be what you write home about. And then uh, there's a suggestion in the sidebar that says, take another look. It says the Corinthian church was a problem almost from its start. And most of you who read any bit of Corinthians know that Paul is always saying, ah, you Corinthians. Read both 1st and 2nd Corinthians to understand this case study of encouragement for a dysfunctional congregation and take heart. We always have more blessings than we think. We always have more at our disposal than we think because God is good and God blesses us. So thank you for being with me uh, for this edition of Lounging in a Lutheran Library. And God bless you and show you all the strengths you have to deal with the world today and to be generous and grateful. God bless you. Thank you.